Hart Bloomfield, space detective, pilot. Interior bathroom, Crawley's apartment, early evening. Eva Crawley, 25, applies lipstick at the mirror, frowning like it's a chore. She no longer wears her trademark leather jacket, now looking fashion conscious in a black toque and yellow windbreaker. She puts down the lipstick and takes in her face, made up. So that's what I look like, mom and her way. She smiles, just a little. Then catching herself, she breaks from the mirror. She picks up mascara from the accessory she has laid out and begins touching up her eye work. I look ridiculous. Hart Bloomfield, 24, stands in the doorway, arms splayed as if to emphasize his humiliation. He sports an absurd pair of bright green reflective pants, a blue t-shirt with the sleeves cut off, and an outlandish snapback cap. Bloomfield holds out the front of his shirt. It reads in bold red font. Corax Police Department and features the corresponding KPD logo below. Please don't make me wear this. It's ironic. Just trust me. Bloomfield groans, leaning his head on the doorframe. You look like a Caraxian hipster. It's good enough, okay? A beat. Crawley goes back to finishing her mascara as Bloomfield comes closer. So remind me, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, husband and wife? She <laughs> glares at him through the mirror. The former. She goes back to applying mascara. Like I said, Caraxians basically think all humans are criminals and fenheads. No matter how hip and young I seem, they'd find any excuse not to sell me a condo. Crawley blinks, satisfied, and puts down the mascara. But, for, for whatever reason, they're less intimidated by us in couples. That's the plan. Fine. But you look normal, whereas I look like a pretentious seventh grader who just discovered irony. Crawley, looking him over, shakes her head. You're missing something. Something that screams thrift store. Interior, Crawley's bedroom, moments later. Crawley flits rapidly through the jackets in her bedroom closet. Something catches her eye. Yes. She pulls out a beat-up army green khaki trench coat and holds it up to show Bloomfield. A relic of my first few months working in Corax. I uh, got a little carried away with the whole private detective thing. Bloomfield is captivated by the trench coat. He puts it on and goes to the mirror to take a look. He twists his hat backwards and suddenly, voila, the ensemble works. Crawley gives a detached nod of approval. Not bad, Bloomfield. You could almost pass for a real space detective. Almost. Bloomfield glares at her, then allows a half smile. Interior, lobby, the logo tower, 8.26 p.m. Hip young Coraxians mingle in the lobby of the Logo Tower in downtown Corax. It's a sea of green skinned faces, all chatting and looking around excitedly. Crawley and Bloomfield, holding hands awkwardly, step in through the revolving door and take in the scene. Let me do the talking this time. As Bloomfield scans the crowd, he notices a few of the green skinned attendees sport official lanyards along with pink t-shirts bearing of Logo Media's stylized letter V logo. Are they? Lutes. The youthful progressive face of Logo Media. Hey, did you folks just get here? One of the Lutes, Frinda, 28, a tiny green woman with a dyed pink pixie cut, stands in front of them. She's holding a digital tablet and smiling wide. Crawley takes Bloomfield's arm with fake enthusiasm. Hi, uh, yes. We actually have a slot book for 830 for the 900 levels under Adela. Frinda checks the list on her clipboard. Yes, I see you. Awesome. I'm Frinda and I'm so excited to be showing you guys around today. Nearby, a superior looking senior of load, early 40s, steps into view, observing Frinda's hyper enthusiasm. He stares at her disapprovingly and makes a note on his tablet. At this, Frenda gulps and quickly drops her enthusiasm, now speaking in a jaded monotone. So, like, I guess let's get started with the tour or whatever. The supervisor smiles, gives Frenda a sudden nod, and goes off to observe someone else. Frenda continues deflated. Just sign in here with your telechip, please. Frenda holds out the clipboard for Crawley and Bloomfield. 
Crowley calmly holds her telechip ring above the clipboard and a red light scans it. Frenda reads the name ID'd on her clipboard and smiles. Adela Bremner, that's a nice name. And you? Bloomfield's face turns red. Crawley interrupts. Oh, um, I'm the one who made the reservation. Brenda shakes her head sympathetically. Oh no, I understand. It's just a dumb security thing. He has to sign in too. It, it's just, he's been having some problems with his teleship recently and... No worries, let's just try it and see if it works. Brenda holds out the clipboard to Bloomfield. Bloomfield hesitates, looking to Crawley. She nods her head suddenly. Slowly, he holds out his trembling hand over the clipboard and his telechip ring flashes red. An ominous beep. End of scene.